start again. Um, the next presentation is on the evaluation of manual versus semi-automatic entry compilation. It's a joint paper by Istok, Kozem, Polona, Gantar, Simon Kreg and Ciprian Laskowski. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, and it's presented by Istok. Thank you, Carol. Uh, so welcome. Uh, and um, the presentation basically focused is a continuation of our work that we presented in 2013. Uh, so those are those of you familiar with uh, our work will will need a slight uh, well not familiar will need a slight introduction to it. So this is just a brief recap. So um, what our work included on the Slovene lexical database was pretty much in, in we started by using Sketch Engine and Word Sketches for lexicographic analysis using tick box lexicography and so forth. And then towards the end of the project, we tested the automatic procedure, which pretty much included the same uh, sort of um, uh, elements or tools that Sketch Engine offers, so Sketch Grammar and Goodex, but also an epic script to extract all the data uh, in an XML format to be able to then uh, import it into the dictionary um, writing software. Now, uh, I should point out that the Sketch Grammar and the Goodex are not the same as used normally for, let's say, manual lexicography. Uh, Sketch Grammar is much more detailed, includes much more grammatical relations, so it's not uh, easy to read by human, and it's used purely for automatic purposes. A similar Goodex was um, sort of uh, uh, devised in more detail, so there were four configurations used, one for each word class. Uh, one of the things we had to do for with the EpiScript, we had to uh, devise these sort of parameters, sort of set limits of what is extracted. And what. Now, one of the things that uh, should, I should stress is that not everything can be um, ported automatically. So in terms of the Slovene lexical database, in red are the items that were exported automatically. So even mm -hmm. when you start evaluating the procedure, so these are the, the parts that you can focus on. And in the end, we selected only uh, the most uh, important ones at that point for us. So this was the sort of uh, the work done in 2013. Now then we faced criticism. So whenever we presented that, uh, so at Elex in Slovenia, so we had people that were already converted, so that was not a problem, but many people said, well, if we want to implement that, there is a problem. First of all is that you cannot replace automatic tools, uh, so you cannot use it, uh, automatic tools to replace lexicographers, uh, you can miss important information, uh, analysis is not as detailed and reliable, so forth, so forth. So just pointing out the issues. I should say that um, those were the criticisms that were made purely on the fact that people were used to doing everything manually or mostly manually, and they haven't really experienced the procedure at all. So there wasn't really any evidence um, for the criticism, and what our task was to actually counter the criticism with the evidence. So we decided to, say, to, to do a, a thorough evaluation of how really reliable the procedure is. And there's one thing prob possibly worth pointing out at this stage is that um, the automatic procedure was never designed to be fully automatic. So it wasn't designed to say, let's automatically extract the data, put it to the user, and then leave it at that. It was never designed like that. It was always planned that the automatic part extracts the corpus data. So leaves out the noise, leaves out uh, bad examples, and so forth, and presents the lexicographer with a thorough overview of the work, and then lexicographer can work on with that. 
So we even did some uh, sort of quantitative analysis, and we the, we quickly um, it proved that uh, the number of examples examined by lexicographers with automatically extracted data is more, more uh, diverse and same in, uh, in amount as when you're analyzing it manually. Well, depending on the time you can spend on it. So the first the first thought was. What should we compare? So what are we actually comparing? So the, the option one was let's compare the entry that was devised manually, which meant sort of analyzing word sketch, copying information into the dictionary writing system, and then compare that with the entry that was finalized, but initial extraction was automatic. So it was automatically extracted data, and then lexicographer cleans it up, validates it, deletes what is relevant, and then the entry. We did several of those entries in the Slovene lexical database. Now the problem is, in fact, there are two, the, the problems are that both procedures, if compared, are actually a combination of using tools and the decision. Even word sketch is already partly automatic tool. It does sort of divides the collocates. It, it already does some work for you. And then lexicographer makes the decision which collocates am I actually choosing. And similar, it's with the automatic data. And also, something that's really well known in lexicography, if you put this to diff two different lexicographers, you will end up with two different entries. So it's really difficult to compare two sort of human products in the end. So this was scratched. This was not a good procedure to evaluate. So the second one, we decided to really focus on one, using the entries that are, were compiled manually, so the manual approach with the word sketches, tick box lexicography, and second part, only automatically extracted data. So we, we sort of do away with all the interference where you have different lexicographic decisions, and we actually evaluate automatic data extraction. Now, this means that you have the data that was extracted and you compare with everything that lexicographer made in the end. You have a lots of data that wasn't used, but you're actually looking at, is the data that you automatically extracted, can it be found by lexicographer in that batch? I will show the sort of the procedure that was sort of more um, illustrate how that was done. So what did we take? We took all the entries in the lexical database that were compiled manually. So we excluded those uh, that were based on the automatic extraction. And we also had to exclude things that we couldn't or we didn't um, extract automatically. So these were some syntactic structures that were not common to both procedures. So SLD is a solving lexical database. AD is automatic data extraction. So some syntactic structures were used only um, in the solving lexical database. And many of them were actually used only in the automatic extractions that were ignored. And then we ignored also collocates that were not found in the Slovene morphological lexicon because this, the ID from the lexicon was actually used for comparison. And we, you, of course, these two parts are really purely lexicographic, so they were excluded as well. So that th those things can uh, only be done uh, by lexicographers after the data. The export of the automatic, uh, or well, the automatic extraction was actually the same as we did in 2013. So we used the same parameter settings with one important change. And that was not relying on a single statistic. So we used, uh, in 2013, we relied only on salience. So in this case, and I, I picked a, a sketch grammar, a, a sketch engine related entry, so to say, and also in English, so it will be easier for you to understand. So on the left, you can see the salience column. So this is what the word sketch gives you by default. On the right, it's a frequency column. So if you say, if you say this is a 15 collocate, and you set the limit to 15, and you order them by this, you set some salience limit, you will miss these collocates that I show on the right. I took uh, I uh, went to some dictionaries, Oxford uh, Dictionary of English, Macmillan Dictionary, and I can tell you that imp information, report, and note are one of the collocates in the examples or um, uh, otherwise listed in those dictionaries. 
So you are missing important information. I mean, you can also say vice versa, that there are some salient collocates that are missed, but in the end, we decided to combine these approaches. So we, we, we joined, merged both lists, uh, top 22 collocates from each list, up to 50 were then extracted, and that was used for the comparison. I mean, this is something that's uh, an upgrade to our automatic extraction, and we intend to use that in the future. Um, it's also, it needs some further research, but it was quite an important finding. And we also needed some post-processing, which I already mentioned, so we had to assign each collocate uh, a, an ID from the morphological lexicon, and we had to convert the names of syntactic structures, but that's sort of a standard procedure that we already do anyway. Now, we did three comparisons, just using abbreviations, because in the, when I illustrate them, be able to follow up. So first, we co compared all the collocates. Regardless of the grammatical relation, we just compared all the collocates. Second one was comparing syntactic structure. So is the syntactic structure found in the automatically extracted data? And finally, only the collocates within each syntactic structure. We did that for the pronouns, adjectives, and adverbs, but not for verbs, because uh, in the Slovene lexical database, many uh, syntactic structures are actually uh, recorded as patterns, and you would have to do a lot of manual work to include those in the database, so we just focused on the first comparison. Now, how did that look? So let's say you have manual entry, which is already collocates group, you have even examples, but these are not relevant for this presentation. And then on the right, you have automatic extraction. So first of all, we compared, so this is the all the collocates. We compared collocates here that you find in brackets with the collocates listed there. So it went, so for example, split now, this is application, is the entry. So split now, it went down, it found the second place, and so th this was marked as found. Like internet, for example, it went through all the collocates, it wasn't found, it marked it in red. I mean, it, it is in fact in, among the collocates, but I just took this particular example here. So this is, this is the procedure for all the collocates. Then we had to compare the structures, which meant collocates were not relevant, so we just compared the structures. So in this case, let's say, for example, this one isn't found, that's 80% coverage, four out of five. And then in the end, we compared collocates and under structures. So if the structure were matched, then it compared only the collocates within that structure. Similar, but uh, not the same. So this is how the comparisons were made. Of course, now the most interesting part, which are the results. So you can see the coverage of all collocates is the highest with adverbs. Um, and it's sort of 75% for all the other word classes. And if you look at the syntactic structures, you can see very high coverage, especially with ad adjectives and adverbs. And if you look at the collocates under structures, it's again around 75 or more. Um, now, also looking at 100% coverage, you see that they are sort of between 8% to a quarter of entries that have all everything covered of terms of collocates. So all the collocates that lexicographers identified are found in the automatic extraction. Then you have in syntactic structures, you have sort of similar percentages and sort of collocates under syntactic structures. And in terms of syntactic structures, especially with adjective and adverbs, it's almost, uh, well, it's sort of 80 and more percent. Okay, now, question. Why not always 100%? So you would think or you would hope that um, it gets, uh, I mean, we, we were quite pleased with these numbers already, I have to admit, but uh, we, we want, wanted to check why not always 100%. So one reason, thank you, one reason is that we use different corpora. So there were, uh, PWAS was a, uh, that's when um, 
manual entries were compiled and then at some point we changed to Giga FIDA, especially for automatic extraction. And although FIDA Plus is included in Giga FIDA, it's some of the text had to be excluded. And uh, more importantly, also different taggers were used for both corpora. So that, that can cause some uh, problems, especially with uh, Slovene morphological um, lexicon, which is based on the statistical tagger used for the Giga FIDA corpora. Also, we use different sketch grammars. So uh, as I said, for manual uh, analysis, of a more, uh, well, just a different, with less grammatical relations, sketch grammar and the automatic has many, many different um, sketch, uh, grammatical relations, so that's one of the possible reasons. And then um, for parameters for automatic extraction, uh, so for example, if there was um, no, if there were no collocates um, ma match the minimum criteria, even if the grammatical relation is identified by the automatic extraction, is not exported automatically, which means on the list of matching structures, it doesn't appear and it reduces the percentage. Um, so also there were some errors in the, uh, the database, not great amount, but still. So there were some typos or wrong case of the collocate, which ended up, uh, which resulted in assigning the wrong uh, ID, so that was one of the reasons. And I didn't list another reason, um, which was sort of a, uh, some in some cases, percentages were greatly reduced by a lemma that really had sort of a zero to 10% coverage because there was some severe problems with um, tags in the, um, the manual entries. Now, let's, turn the tables, so we were evaluating the automatic procedure. Now, if we look at the other way, because what, what, what was uh, uh, excluded from the analysis, we have, we have to know that on average, five to six times more collocates are, is exported by the automatic uh, data extraction procedure, in some cases up to 30 times. I mean, granted, some of them are irrelevant, or noise, but what we found is that in many cases, the lexicographer missed some of the salient, frequent, and other collocates. That could possibly also be on, a, on the account of the very same reason I listed earlier. So the, the lexicographers were looking at word sketch output by salience. They didn't switch all the time. They, they maybe they opened up. Um, so the, the first, they have 25 collocates listed. We want more, there's 50. So when you get to numbers like 100, you know, do you, are you paying attention? Are you opening up each collocate? So you end up listing three, four collocates, but missing all the others. So this is also one of the things where the automatic extraction comes handy because it lists all, all the collocates and then you can delete them or so it does away with copy and pasting and that may sort of, um, make the lexicographer look at the data rather than just selecting the first few collocates. So the bottom line, um, uh, which really showed it, is that validating is still quicker. And in this case, it's becoming, well, I'm not saying it's more, but it's probably becoming sort of the same, uh, same level of uh, reliability than manual selection as copy pasting uh, from sketch, word sketching. Writing. Now we want to take this further, or we will this take this further. So we want to look at the individual syntactic structure because it's clearly not the same. You have a like um, adjective noun relationship, very has a high coverage rate. There are others that might be problematic. So we want to identify whether there are some really problematic ones that are using the percentages. And then there's this uh, lemma frequency um, also plays a role because we also found that in some cases the lemma frequency increases the coverage. So increasing lemma frequency increases the coverage, whereas with I think with adjectives in some cases really reduce the coverage. So we need to see what's going on there. Uh, and this is one of the um, to-do tasks uh, in immediate future is 
to go to the semantic level. So what we want to do is take all the examples in the automatic extraction, just take all the meanings, all the senses identified by the lexicographers, and, I, and see whether we, all the examples cover all the meanings, whether all the meanings are covered for by the extracted examples. Um, and the last uh, thing is the one that I already mentioned. So exploring this uh, relationship between salience and frequency in word sketch because that's sort of the basis for automatic extraction. And I think our Estonian friends already have some similar experience, sort of, you know, which, um, which uh, statistic are you using for ex um, export then affects the quality of the data. That's it. Thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, yes, I suspect that uh, your comparisons were computationally quite expensive, but nevertheless, uh, wouldn't you think about uh, trying to use the automatic procedure on the old version of the corpora so that the data will be, would be exactly the same? Well, it won't be the same. Well, we then need to. No, I don't. I don't. Um, I don't think we will because we we were thinking whether to use the old corpus. But then, um, because some of the entries were then were, were also later updated with some of the GigaFIDA information, and no, there's no way of us knowing that. I don't think that it's worth going back. Uh, I don't, we don't have plans to do that mm -hmm. because um, it's the, the analysis included the combination in some cases. So we don't we don't have to would have to follow up each entry, trying to find whether it was compiled using only feed the plus data or not. Mm -hmm. Thank you. More questions? I would, I would just say some words about this uh, silence and frequency choice. Um, I think that the best solution would be still cell frequency. Frequency collocates suitable more for learners, let's say, A1, A2, B1 level. And then silent collocant collocates they are more suitable for B2, C1, C2 level. So it depends on the user. I think that you, uh, Kiotona here, here supports my idea. So the better, the best way would be is that in the corpora, all those color gates would be assigned to a particular level are of users. So then if you compile dictionary for the beginners, you really take into consideration only very frequent color gates. If you compile it for native speakers, you even may not put frequent color gates at all, but native speakers would be translators. They would be more interested in silent color gates. And uh, this is like, um, if you do it like all together, then you have to have to uh, give users some, color, some kind of sign so that those color gates are not very frequent. Use those better. Yeah. Okay. Well. Um to some extent, for the learners, I, I would possibly agree. I don't think it would be the same for native speakers. Re very sort of, because in this case, what I'm showing here, uh, so let's say we stick with your strategy and we look at only this for native speakers. Now, the, the, first, the first three in um, collocates in red, I looked in the native speaker dictionaries, and they are there, which means that lexicographers devising dictionaries for native speakers, identify them as important. So, and I think that happens with many entries. I don't think that a particular statistic can determine the user in this case. So that's why. Combination, uh, combination is fine. You just give frequent color case and then you give silent color, color case. But it's not possible to give only silent because if learners would look at this silent, at those silent color gates, they wouldn't get anything from there. So they would be really stressed. Oh no, no, I, I yeah. mean that's why that's, I said combination. Yeah, the combination, yes, combination is like what we have to do. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have got time for. Okay. Sorry, Patrick. <laughs>
that will be for during the lunch break. Thank you once again, Isdok, for your wonderful presentation.